a massive food crisis seems to be looming over China, the current health crisis has severely damaged major economies around the globe. It has triggered the permanent closure of numerous businesses, provoked a large increase in unemployment rates, and, according to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, food shortages have been emerging worldwide. I have be been becoming more and more aware of growing food shortages everywhere in the world, including in my own country in New Zealand. I shall be dealing with this uh, separately, uh, but it seems that I can find out more about problems in other countries far more easily than I can of what is happening here. I have to rely largely on anecdote by talking to people out in the community and joining the dots as the media is failing us miserably. Internationally, just have a look at all the videos that are on YouTube on this uh, topic for the last week. All I had to do was just put in a, a simple um, search uh, food shortages and this is what I came up with. But I want to talk first about China. I've used a short documentary called China on the Brink of a Major Food Shortage to Prepare for Worldwide Starvation, made by Epic Economist. Um, and I have interspersed this with some other material to illustrate the situation on a thematic basis. And I just want to go on and discuss the situation in neighboring India and uh, some other case histories uh, from my own part of the world. So here goes. So I just want to start with a brief uh, report that came in yesterday uh, from um, NTD. Uh, you know, it's a um, Chinese channel, I think, in exile, and they're watching what's happening in China. I'm Tiffany Meyer. First, we turn to China's food shortage. In the first 11 months of this year, China imported nearly 100 million tons of grain, marking a 30% increase year on year. According to China's customs data, in the first 10 months, corn imports exceeded 7 million tons. That's almost twice the amount imported last year. And from January to November, China's soybean imports increased by nearly 20% year on year. As for rice, China purchased around 100,000 tons from India. It marks the first time Beijing has imported rice from India in nearly 30 years. Chinese media attributed the jump in imports to other countries' low grain prices. Beijing has repeatedly denied the rising suspicions of a grain shortage in the country. But farmers across China tell us that severe flooding last summer and heavy rain during autumn led to poor grain harvests. China has faced multiple challenges in 2020. Floods, plagues, and the trade dispute with the US all contributed to seriously affect the production and distribution of food. Although the Chinese government has done everything to keep this situation under wraps, many indicators point out that shortages have been happening in a wide range of food products, and the nation has been relying on imports to meet the demand. Food prices have been soaring like never before, and experts have been warning of a hunger emergency at the same proportions as the 1959 Great Chinese Famine. China's list of problems keeps growing. 
It started with a burst of what turned out to be a global health crisis, which caused record high unemployment rates. An economic meltdown led millions to poverty and sparked a global backlash. Now, the Chinese government has been secretly dealing with a food emergency in an attempt to avoid the public's commotion, despite Chinese Premier Xi Jinping's constant denials that the country could be facing hardships on its food supply chains. Experts have been claiming on local reports that China was indeed in the middle of a food crisis. According to some of these reports, there are many reasons behind this situation. The impacts of the sanitary outbreak have compromised the agricultural cycle due to lockdowns and, consequently, a shortage of labor to harvest the crops. In addition to livestock diseases, devastating floods and the disruption of global supply chains. In view of growing food shortages, the Chinese Premier even launched a public campaign aiming to reduce food wastage. In August, he reintroduced a project called Operation Empty Plate. After having affirmed that the amount of food thrown away every year was shocking and distressing. In fact, China does waste an awful amount of food. The latest data released mount back to 2015, when an estimated 18 million tons of food were wasted in China. Back then, scientists suggested that this staggering amount of food should be enough to feed a country about the size of South Korea. However, when the campaign was first launched in 2013, it targeted big feasts organized by Chinese officials. Right now, it has been extended to the public. Oftentimes, the measures adopted by government officials to make sure the population continues to follow the rules are considered invasive and aggressive. The Chinese president condemns what is known as mukbang, a very common trend amongst Chinese bloggers, which he defines as binge eating, as he asks the people to prevent wastage of food and eat frugally. Restaurants were ordered to adopt special procedures to control the amount of food that goes to the bin. The Catering Association of Wuhan issued a new rule called the N1 model, which limits the number of portions one can order in restaurants. The association wrote open letters to restaurants, stressing they should be mindful of the amount of food that they served. Under the N1 model, group dinners are limited to get one portion less than the number of components of the group. That is to say, if food is ordered for a group of six people in a restaurant, only five portions of food can be served. Some of the controversial actions taken by the Chinese government were the complete removal of mukbang videos from social media platforms, since the government perceives it as an encouragement for food wastage. Additionally, cameras were installed in several cities to catch consumers disposing of their food and publicly shame them by broadcasting their behavior on big screens installed across the country. Some restaurants even started to ask customers to weigh themselves before ordering food so that owners could suggest plates that would correspond to their weight, which triggered a major backlash on social media and the practice ended up being discontinued. Throughout the year, the Chinese media have been dismissing any discussions about a potential food shortage, stating that the quality of being careful with money or resources, especially avoiding wastage, was a part of Chinese culture. In contrast, the relation with economic partners and the expansion of imports have been showing otherwise. For instance, a recent article by Op India has exposed that, as China edges towards a food crisis, it looks at India to feed its citizens. Ever since China has engaged in sensitive disputes, Several partners that used to supply the food needs of the country have been imposing new sanctions, 
previously, the Chinese government used to purchase rice from Thailand, Myanmar, Vietnam, and Pakistan. But now that the countries are quoting rates which were at $30 extra for a ton of rice, China has now turned to India to import rice. China's importing rice from India shows that the country is in desperate need of rice. It has contracted Indian traders for the import of 100,000 tons of broken rice for $300 per ton, informs the article. On top of that, local news announced in September that prices of corn were soaring as the country was headed towards a substantial shortage of corn in the upcoming 2020 to 2021 season. According to reports, China could face a deficit of up to 30 million tons, which makes around 10% of the total produce. Only weeks ago, the Chinese government published a new draft law on the management of its grain reserves, which includes the monitoring of stocks in regions and provinces in order to improve its food security levels. Rules on grain reserves usually were only applied to central state stockpiles. But, according to Reuters, at this stage, Beijing has heightened its focus on risks to the food supply. The National Development and Reform Commission said in a statement on its website that the new law was developed as New situations and questions have arisen regarding Grains Reserves Security Administration, posing severe challenges to China's grains stockpile security. The states need to secure grains output, and its capability to control domestic supplies has become more urgent, outlined Meng Jinhui, senior analyst with Shenga Futures. The new law establishes how the reserve volumes can be set and the products that can and cannot be included, and even when the grains are allowed to be released. The grain reserves can only be used in the face of significant price moves, major natural disasters, shortages and other emergencies. The document supports that urban and rural residents should stockpile grains as well. One of the main drivers to the spike in corn prices was also the occurrence of the African swine fever outbreak that infected and decimated 40% of the total Chinese pigs population consequently decreasing the supply but increasing the prices on pork. According to China's National Bureau of Statistics, pork prices went up 52.6% in August compared to the same time last year, while corn prices, which is the main porcine fodder, climbed 20% compared to 2019. The United States Department of Agriculture divulged that China imported 195,000 more tons of American corn than the year before. Furthermore, the country has suffered from severe floodings and droughts this year, which declined the agricultural productivity of the country and resulted in a considerable increase in food prices. Southern, Central, and eastern China experienced a period of heavy rain and the worst flooding recorded in at least 100 years. In July, extremely high water levels in major Chinese rivers occasioned the evacuation of 15 million people and destroyed 13 million acres of agricultural land, which estimated economic damage is in the range of $29 billion. At the same time, the northern and southwest parts of the nation underwent a period of severe drought. Almost 1.5 million people in Yunnan province suffered from a catastrophic emergency that left them without drinking water, while hundreds of hectares of crops and livestock were damaged. 
As a result, the supply of many agricultural goods and pork was compromised, which of course also contributed to the spike in the prices of these goods. In a report released by the National Bureau of Statistics of China, overall, food prices have increased by 11.2% compared to last year's statistics. The price level of vegetables climbed 6.4% in one month, while egg prices surged by 11.3% within the same time frame. Evidently, pork prices grew the most by 52 0.6% compared to 2019. Moreover, lockdowns also worsened China's food difficulties. Restrictions on personal mobility and the transportation of goods impacted the operations of supply chains. Amid widening rates of confirmed cases nationwide, in January, Chinese authorities had adopted measures to limit free circulation within the country, imposing city lockdowns, traffic control, and closed management of villages and communities. Consequently, many workers had problems getting to work, which caused a shortage of physical labor that affected production levels. While some were not picked, others were not even planted. That's why the overall supply of agricultural goods inevitably decreased. Alternatively, as a recent RIAC report highlighted, at the beginning of the year, the demand for them also fell as restaurants and bars were closed. Thereby, many crops went to waste, while farmers did not make enough profit to purchase the seeds and fertilizers for the next season. It is a problem because businesses continued to open up, raising the demand and prices on crops. Immobility also impacted the distribution of seeds and fertilizers to the farms that disrupted the plantation season. Furthermore, the distribution of agricultural goods to grocery stores became difficult. Particular inconveniences associated with the restrictions on mobility all added up to the spike of prices on crops. According to Associate Professor of the National Defense University, Sheng Ming Shi, the figures released by China officials aren't likely to be true. But since the country does not share enough of its data with the rest of the world, this cannot be verified. However, he points out that when the country experienced natural disasters that culminated in a hunger crisis in what is known as the 1959 Great Chinese Famine, Chinese officials released similar orders to prevent people from wasting food, which might be an indicator that a hunger crisis is indeed on the horizon. Additionally, taking into account that many workers and households faced a significant loss of income as a consequence of the economic recession China went through this year, they are all susceptible to become food insecure, especially in a moment when prices have been continuously soaring. So far, social repercussions can already be observed in the overall level of crime, health issues among adults and infants, high death rate, and also what is called survival eating. As explained by the professor, 
Certain signs, such as when the people are robbing food, when the people have no food to eat, and they switch to alternatives, such as weeds, dog, cat, mouse meat, and other things they wouldn't normally eat in order to survive. As food insecurity silently grows in China, financial and economic challenges will make it harder for the country to overcome its downturn. Additionally, due to the lack of labor force, international trade will also be impaired, since Chinese imports in foreign countries are likely to increase in price. Earlier this year, the UN predicted that the world would face a food crisis so acute that the last time it was witnessed at the same level was at least 50 years ago. Now it appears to have arrived, and China seems to be in the middle of such a crisis and might be buying all the grains available on the global markets to ensure the survival. Next, this next piece uh, comes from an Indian source, and it, it's talking about a report from Myanmar, uh, Burma, of a Chinese trader uh, that went missing, and it, it is um, indicating that perhaps China doesn't have the money to pay for it. its, uh, uh, its um, food imports. China's food crisis is turning out to be much more severe than what we were imagining. And now, even Myanmar is exposing China's vulnerability when it comes to the communist nation's most important staple food, rice. As per the Irrawaddy, a popular news website founded by Burmese exiles living in Thailand, some rice traders in Myanmar are looking to seek help from the Ministry of Commerce and Chinese officials regarding a Chinese trader identified as Luo Jianfang. According to the Rice Wholesale Center in Meuse, Myanmar's largest trading hub on the China border, Luo disappeared without paying for over 2.6 billion kiats, that is, nearly 2 million US dollars worth of rice purchased from Burmese traders. Interestingly, Luo also bears an indirect connection with the Chinese state, showing just how acute China's food shortage crisis could be. As per U Min Thain, vice chairman of the Moose Rice Wholesale Center, Luo represents Shangshang affiliates. Thain said Luo signed all the agreements with Myanmar traders as a representative of the company. The traders trusted Luo as they have also strong records of doing business with the company. The Irrawaddy claims to have learned that the concerned Chinese trader owns 20% share in the company, the official name of which is Yunnan Pilot Free Trade Zone China Commercial Food Trading Company Limited. Another entity called the Yunnan Pilot Free Trade Zone Shansheng Xie Company Limited also owns a 51% stake. This entity is in turn controlled by China Southwest Enterprise Company Management Co that owns 70% of the shares and is owned by China's Commercial Network Construction and Development Center. CCNCC is no ordinary company. It comes directly under China's state-owned Asset Supervision and Administration Commission of the State Council. SESAC supervises and manages state-owned assets of firms under the supervision of the central government. As per the Irrawaddy, no traders on either side of the Sino-Myanmar border have had any contact with Luo since 2nd December. The high stakes involved here have fueled anxiety within Burmese traders. Umin Thain said a team at the wholesale center is now collecting data about the number of Burmese traders affected and the quantum of loss that they have suffered. Myanmar has caught China on the wrong foot here, and it is unlikely that the Burmese traders would let the paper dragon escape without embarrassment. Thain said, we will ask the Ministry of Commerce to mediate the issue. We will also contact the Chinese embassy in Myanmar if needed. At the end of the day, it seems that China neither has food nor money to feed its citizens. The horrifying food crisis in China is quite an embarrassment for the government of the second largest economy in the world. Finally, uh, I just want to use some material from an excellent documentary by uh, Sir Pensa, um called How China is Slowly Killing Us All. Uh, this is a person who has spent a lot of time in China and is very sympathetic towards the uh, towards the Chinese people, uh, but rather less so towards the Chinese Communist Party. Just see 
uh, what he has to say about the impact of uh, Chinese policy and Chinese actions uh, abroad when it comes to the environment. China is the enemy of the sea. If you've watched some of my videos, you'll know that I've spoken about this briefly before. China has completely outfished the waters off the coast of China, and so their fishing trawlers must seek alternatives. And the alternatives are the rest of the entire world. Clandestine Chinese fishing has decimated the fish stocks off the coast of South Africa, my country, and most of the African coast, where corrupt leaders are easily paid to turn a blind eye, while local fishermen and communities suffer greatly. China, mainland China, went through devastating starvation. They went through devastating famine. It was the results of the Great Leap Backwards and the cultural devolution the Communist Party put into place, and it led to the starvation of millions of people. I mean, just think about that for a minute. Millions of people die from starvation. You had situations where people were selling their children as food. Cannibalism was a thing. It's terrible. It's a horrible, horrible pockmark on the history of China, and it's something that the Communist Party would very soon forget. But unfortunately, people don't forget. It's now bred into society, it's bred into the psyche, and especially the people that still survived today, that lived through that time, they will never forget the bad times of starvation. And what this has resulted in is it's resulted in a situation where if there's something to take now, they will take it now without any regard for the future and what might happen in the future. If the food is there, eat it now. In fact, the most common greeting in China when you meet someone is they ask you, which means, have you eaten? It's that ingrained into the culture that a normal like, how are you doing, how are you doing, is, have you eaten? I don't know if you've been keeping up with the news, but just recently, a massive flotilla of Chinese fishing vessels was surrounding the Galapagos Islands. 300 of them, they fished for 73,000 hours non-stop, pulling up tons and tons and tons of sea life, fish, squid, everything else from around the Galapagos Islands, completely destroying the habitats there, of course, completely unchecked. They're a menace, these Chinese fishing flotillas that go around the seas, around the entire world, just stripping the oceans bare. And the reason they do this is, the seas surrounding mainland China no longer contain enough fish to feed the populace. In fact, it's almost impossible, and especially since China goes through these, these terrible situations, like recently with the swine flu that wiped out a huge amount, 50% of the pork in mainland China, you have food shortages. And the big floods that have happened recently, you know, that started up in the Three Gorges Dam area and basically wiped out the breadbasket of China, you have food shortages. So what does China do in order to replenish and feed the population is they send out these massive fishing flotillas around the globe, destroying the sea life everywhere they go. And the problem is there is no sustainable fishing. They don't believe in sustainable fishing. When you see these fishing trawlers pull up fish, they will take something the size of a pinhead. They don't care. There's no catch and release in China. You have to understand it's take, 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 take. It's a grab now while you can situation. We've seen this countless times. I'm sure you've all seen the video of the, the shrimp grab or the fruit grab or the whatever grab. It does happen. It's a part of society. Like I said, it can all be traced back to the starvation and, you know, the, the terrible famines that China went through very recently, you know, still within some people's lifetime. So, so not only do we have these dangerous fishing flotillas going around destroying the, the world's oceans, we also have things like in the South China Sea where they build these artificial islands and they bring in these big uh, ships and machinery that dig up the seabed to, in order to make these artificial islands and destroy entire ecosystems. I mean, this goes really far. And I'm getting really tired of people not paying attention to this. Whenever you hear about climate activists and, uh, you know, these ecological activists like Greta Thunberg and stuff, it's always like waving fingers at uh, first world developed countries saying, hey, you know, you better, you know, reduce your carbon footprint. 
you're running our future type things. Meanwhile, you've got mainland China sending these fishing flotillas around the world, destroying the ocean and the sea life. It's ridiculous. That's um, part one relating to uh, uh, the situation in China and how it affects the rest of the world. And I hope that you will look at part two, uh, which discusses uh, India. And I've also just put together, and putting together, uh, some stuff that relates to uh, the rest of the world.